we're stranded on this island off the coast of Kingston. It's me, a white boy born in Jamaica, and a Ray and nephew with a little splash of coke. I don't know how we're gonna get out of here. But I also heard that this island is infested with, with rats. Let's see if we can find our way out of here. Which way? Which way? Which way should I go? I see land. Um, this is the old naval hospital from when the British were here. Um, it's been like this since what, 1800s? Destroyed. But um, right now, right now you're driving over Port Royal City, over right Yeah, there's Sunken City. Right. There's a city here? Yeah, yeah so right this, is the, this is where the Sunken City is. Yeah. How deep is that? Uh, maybe about 30 feet. Yeah, wow. So you guys go here to your side, right? Yeah. You're not allowed to die here. And you, how do you enjoy it though? You don't. You don't. You talk about it as you drive over. That's where all the pirate gold is. Okay. Hey, that might be a good idea for the, the next title of the video. Hunting for pirate gold. <laughs> I guess that's why the, the, the police there, the, major, the guards are there. Two major earthquakes happened from way, way, way back. Yes. And then way back, the, a lot of poor oil has sunk underwater. Okay. 30 feet is quite a distance. So there's a church, there's bars, everything, restaurants. And on a good day, you can hear the church bell ring. Yeah. <laughs> my, my grandfather actually told me about when he was younger, he died. He dove to a sunken ship around here. Yeah. And they actually took China from the boat. Yeah. He said on his way up, up the rope, biggest shark he's seen in his life circled him the whole way up. Yeah. I would have come up with a plant full of shit. Why not? Bar and grill. I'm excited for today's video. My prediction is this video is gonna do really good when it comes to statistical numbers because the story what we're gonna talk about is very interesting. Hey guys, all gone. See, that's why I wanted you to talk to them because when, when they hear your accent, they're gonna be puzzled <laughs> from around the world. So James is born and grow yeah. here in Jamaica. Born and grow. Born and grow. So talk to me, what is it like, what was it like growing up here uh, being a white Jamaican? Um, you know, growing up here, it was no real different than just being a child. We didn't yeah. really think about those things. Um, now that we're older, we realize I'm the token white friend. It was just, you know, like how Bob Marley said, one love. Yeah. Everybody, we're just friends. Everybody's just the same people. It started to take on, like Ola you got, it started to take on a little, a little something. Start to notice people call out, white boy, white boy. Yeah. And say, Oh, okay. There, I guess there's a little difference here. Yeah. Well, no, good. I couldn't live anywhere else. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Jamaica is home. Yeah. You know, our motto is out of many, one people. Yeah. And you told me earlier that, uh, like, the color, the white color is, is the smallest percentage or yeah, ratio. We'd be, we'd be the largest minority. Okay. Um, the majority of the population is black, probably 98 to 99%. Then the rest is broken down between Chinese, Indian, and white. And I think you could say there's a little more Chinese than Indians. Um, and I'm talking Jamaicans, people who are born here, been here. Right. And then, yeah, white would be the smallest. This is most an opinion. Yes. But yeah. Might not be factual, but pretty From close. From what I've seen From growing up here seen. for 28 years. Yes. As a white man visiting, give me three phrases that are popular right now in Jamaica. I'm gonna try my best not to embarrass myself. Let me let me hear what they, they are first. I'll see if I can try to match it. It's just so when I'm out there, uh, they might think I'm a white Jamaican tomorrow. They ask you what you do for a living. You can tell them you chop a line. Okay. And that means um, you're scamming. Okay. Yeah. But why why chop the line? Like on the telephone or telephone something? line. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See this? So. See, I grew up around Jamaican people. I'm putting it together like a mathematical equation. Yeah. So, so you chop the line. Yeah, that's that's unfortunately. Yes. It is unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate because crime is bad. It affects everyone negatively. Yes. But fortunately, I think, to be honest, that really helped our economy yeah. stay stable throughout COVID. Yeah. So, Survival is chop a, a line or bang the line. Ba ben? Mm, sorry, your okay. voice, no problem. <clears throat> Here, get a drink. 
Bang, bang. Bang. Okay. Bang a line. Bang a line. So tell him you're a chopper. Chopper. <laughs> In my part of the world, you're a chopper. It means you're cut. You're stealing cars. You're chopping it up yeah. and you're selling it. Uh, but here you're chopping a line. Next is the, the classic bomba cloud. Yes, I've heard it. Yeah. Tell me with distinction. What is the meaning? There, the real meaning is um, dates back to bomba cloud and blood cloth. Yeah. Date back. That's like um, <laughs> menstrual cloth. Yeah. It's like a blood cloth. Yeah. A bomba cloth used for menstrual um, periods, but it's turned into a word that can be used for everything, any occasion. Yeah. Happy, sad, angry. It's like you have a yo blood clot, yo yeah. today sweet, yeah. or that blood clot idiot go fuck up my day, yeah. you know. So it could um, be positive, it could be negative. It's a it's an all rounder. <laughs> so when's the last time in conversation that you came up and, and you had the urge to say bomba clot? I say it probably. A hundred times a day. A hundred times a yeah. day. So um, the meaning must be lost. If you're using it that often, it's got to be a word that's got to be a, scarce. It's a, it's a passion word. It's, it's a passion, passion word now. You use it. So, <laughs> yeah. you use Give it to me in a sentence. How can you use part of today, our meeting today, how are we going to use it in a positive way? The food here today was so bomba clock good. Yes. I can't even begin to describe it with regular words. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to put you on the spot. And Use the same word in a negative Annotation. Yo, that bomba clot idiot go fucking drop my food on the floor. Yes. Shit. See, this is, we're learning the A, B's, and C's of uh, Jamaican language. Uh, Patois. Know, you, I'm, it's breaking my heart that I'm here with Christmas list. Yes. And my voice is. Like, so normally your voice is much deeper? I, I, I don't want to call it deeper, but yeah. my voice is there. Yes. It's, um, you can tell it's going, it's in and out. Yeah. Um, so I can't even speak properly right now. We're working you. Yeah. Give well, me, give me one more phrase that's popular. The most important phrase is "wagon." Okay. Um, so I heard this was I heard this was created in Canada, Toronto, Canada. Look here. <laughs> Thing they call man's them. Canadians, Brits, all of you people out there trying to thief our language. Drake, stop it. Give credit where credit is due. Yes, you can use it. Yes, you can talk it. But don't try to steal our language. Don't try to appropriate our language. Wagwan, Bumbo Clot, Blood Clot, Batiman. All them words are yard words. You're welcome to use our language. But it is our language and give respect where respect is due. You told me it's up to like four or five generations born uh, yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I, before this year, I worked for my family business, yeah. and our family business in Jamaica is over 80 years old, founded in 1938. So, for it to have been founded here, that, that would have to be here that long. Yes. So yeah, we've been here a long, long time. Um, we are Jamaicans, born and raised yeah. to our blood. Everything we do is for Jamaica, for our people. And obviously for ourselves, you know. Yeah, and you told me on uh, TikTok when you started out, uh, you were blowing up. Yeah. I think, you know what, obviously, sometimes when you take yourself out of your own shoes, you don't realize, right? But, like, for me, I talked about it in an earlier video, when I heard a Chinese man with a deep Jamaican accent, it still blows my mind. I know it's something so silly. It, yeah. it could be any race that has a Jamaican accent, but uh, yet again, I think internationally, it, it's something it's a stereotype. that... Yeah, it's a stereotype that... Most people don't realize that there are white people yeah. living and Chinese people living here on I mean, the island. At 16 years old, I moved to America to finish high school. Okay. So I graduated high school in Jamaica the day after I turned 16. Um, and then I moved away. I uh, did a year and a half of school before they kicked me out. But some of the questions I got when I went up there were, how did you get here? Do you live in a tree? Do you live in a cave? Yeah. Um, did you take a boat up here? Why are you not black? Where are your dreads? Yeah. So yeah, I know there's a big stereotype, but now we have everybody and we're all one people, isn't it? Yeah. What about at parties? Do you stand out? <laughs> when somebody sees you at first glance, based on the way you look, do they do they know that you're Jamaican? Or um, they have to hear your voice first? I mean, it all depends. I even have Jamaicans hear me speak and they say, oh, you're not Jamaican, nice accent, nice try. Yeah. Even right now, sorry guys, my voice is kind of messed up. Um, but when you see me in, in the dance... Oh, you're the center of attention. No, no, that's my, that's my little brother. So if you ever see my brother, he's... If you see me and you yeah. see my brother, yeah. 
you wouldn't think I'm white anymore. Yeah. He's blonde hair, blue eyes, really white. Yes. But we, we, we do make a scene when we go to the dance. Yeah, I can imagine. Maybe you'll see it on Monday. <laughs> yeah. It smells good. So, you see the scotch bonnet on it. Yes. And then, the extra scotch bonnet there. Nice and hot. So. And you like hot? I, Spicy? I'm working on it. Okay. I eat a little bit. A little bit. What about yourself? I love it. Yeah, I love it too. I eat more than the average white man. <laughs> Where to start? You're saying this is good. Let's this is good. Hmm. Guys, I want to make a, a hot sauce. I've always wanted to make one. I'm, I really lost more than I gained here, but. This is the best one for me. I like them all. Anything Mostly. that comes from the water, I like it. Thank you. What did you get? Garlic. Garlic. What is this? Um, festival. festival. I don't even this know what that is. Finish with this? No, 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 okay, no. Okay. We're gonna bathe in this. Oh, okay, okay. So this okay. is like rolled up. It's like fried dough. Okay, inside nothing. No. Just dough. I don't want nothing inside a festival. Gotcha. But a festival normally has a lot of individuals. Like a festival is no, not this kind of festival. And what is this? That's bami. Bami. What is it though? A vegetable cassava. or fruit? Okay, cassava. So I guess I've tried everything just with different names. Yes. So, lunch, five stars, everything is completely gone. Even my, my napkin is covered in curry, but very good. Thank you, no problem. the boss. How is it living as the minority in Jamaica? Is, what, is there a negative aspect to it? And then we'll talk no. about the positive. I think the only negative aspect is the same as everywhere, is when you come up against ignorance. Yes. Um, and people want to use a difference between two people to target you. Yes. Or to create a bigger rift and create hate. I would say, yeah, that would probably be the biggest problem. And you find that everywhere. Yeah. But to my situation, yeah, I've experienced that. My family has experienced that. My brother has. Um, but I mean, like, for have. example, if you're going to the gas station or you're going shopping or no, you're at the mall. Not, it's not a daily thing. It's not a daily thing. It's not a daily thing. thing. So that's why I say it's when you come up against ignorance. Yeah. But you find, as a lot of people say, you find Jamaicans are loving, very yeah. warm and friendly. Yeah. From what I've found. Yeah, so most uh, of the time you won't have it. It's just... And, and I think, you know, a lot of the people I've spoken to so far, if not them, their family has lived in other countries as well. So I think it's opened up their mind to, yeah, there's alternate races and we are all one. You see, our biggest issues here, more like classism and um, rich and poor. Let's go into this because you're not the first one to tell me this. Instead of racism, it's classism. Yeah. Explain to me what classism means to you. I mean, it's when people see a divide between what some people have and what some people don't have. Yes. So it's looking at the end product. A lot of people don't look at the journey, the risks, what people have to do to get where they are. Yeah. Um, the generations of hard yes. work. So where I will say sometimes you see racism is a lot of times people try to portray that only white people in Jamaica are rich and only white people have money. Yes. Which, just looking at the statistics, is impossible. Majority of the population is black. Yes. Majority of the rich people in Jamaica are black. We're looking at some pretty big boats. Yes. Over there, yeah. right. So, so the evidence is in front of us. Majority of the wealth is within one um, population, but it gets skewed because majority of the poverty yes. is also with one part of the population. Yes. Um, it's very sad. But you have a lot of great people out there trying to do their best um, to give back, to build a better Jamaica. Yes. You know, it's my personal opinion. A big part of why we are where we are is because of politics. When we had the brain, the brain drain in the 70s, we lost our middle class, we lost our skilled laborers, um, our skilled workers. That put a massive impact on our economy, our country as a growth development. If you look around the world, you find Jamaicans in massive positions all around the world. Yes. These people could have been back in Jamaica building the country. It was just ideology. Gotcha. So it was democracy versus communism. 
um, socialism versus capitalism. Yes. And, you know, anywhere you go in the world, there's good and bad. There's good and bad of communism, there's good and bad of democracy, there's good and bad of capitalism, etc., etc. But the sad reality is what has played out. So when we were moving towards a communist socialist country, our country got fucked. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse my language. Sorry. Um, and now we are where we are. But, you know, that doesn't mean it's hopeless. It's up to us who stayed here, who stayed and fought, who are still here living every day. It's up to us to make a better Jamaica and we'll keep doing it. What about 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Your children's children's children. My children are born, yes, sir. Yeah. My children are for grow, yes, sir. Yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Not leaving. We've been here over 80 years. We're not leaving. Yeah. This. There's something special about Jamaica and Jamaicans. I think, I mean, like I told I've been to 40 countries. Mm -hmm. I've lived in um, two others. And, like, there's something special here. It is just, I don't, I'm yeah. connected. My soul, my soul is built here. Yeah. So, you've shown your followers and you've talked about we're in a few white room. Yes. This is commercialized and I call this the devil's piss car. <laughs> I don't drink this. If I drink this, yeah. Hey, he's trying, he's trying to make me feel bad for drinking the no, devil's no, no. piss. You, you do what you Here, cheers, wait a sec. Okay, yes, continue, sorry. If I drink this, yes. my clothes coming off, yes. and somebody's girlfriend coming on with me. <laughs> but. <laughs> Maybe you need to give it a better name if you're going to have that kind of fun. But. Yeah. There's a local version called Junk Robotty. Okay. She's like a vulture's ass. Okay. <laughs> and that's that's never our, never heard of this before. That's our version of moonshine. Okay. So if you get to go out and explore, yes. Try get some of that, but be very careful. What's gonna happen for me? If for you you're clothes and I'm married, uh, so I can't bring a woman home. But what? Wh how does it get the name vulture's ass? And what the hell does a vulture's ass even look like? It's a junkro. What is it? It's junkro. Uh, yeah, it's in Jamaica, it's called junkro. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where well, the name came I've, from. I've had, it, I've had it once. Yeah. And, and that's like enough. A, you know those moments in time that you don't remember? Yes. It's like worse than a For black me, oak. Sambuca. I don't know if you guys have Sambuca. I've heard, I've heard of oh, it. Oh, that would mess you up. But this is funny because when I was like very young, let's say the legal drinking age in, in my province is like 19. Yeah. So when I was 19 or 20 or 21 and I didn't have money, I'll buy this. Because, you little know, a, a little goes a long way. When my guests come over, they'll have one smell and they'll be like, no, 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 I don't want any. I'll put a little bit of water with it and this little bottle will last me a long time. So, yeah. You're talking about people are scared of it. Yes. In Jamaica, this is used in so many remedies. Yeah. Never fever. You soak like all a rug in this and put it on your forehead. <laughs> and if you have throat problems, which everyone has been telling me like I haven't tried it before. Yeah. White rum, honey and lime. Yes. Guys, it's not working for my throat. Yes. It's a little ser more serious, but this is a party tonic, a relationship tonic, a bedroom tonic. <laughs> hey, wall cleaner. You know my kids when they're drawing with a marker on the wall and they were small, I go to my wife, get the rain nephew. We put that on a cloth, it takes anything, it fixes anything. This is more than just a drink. But if you're new to it, this is something that takes time. You can't be messing with this right off the bat. No. The rum I drink is called Appleton. Yeah. And that's made out in St. Elizabeth. You have a nice rum tour. Yeah. My rum tour is I just stop at every store and have, have one, <laughs> one yeah. drink with a stranger and then continue on the rum tour. That's, that's it. Or some work to park. <laughs> so talk to me. Let me jump you into the conversation. You know, I've been touring. I've been touring Jamaica and going to what some consider the more dangerous areas. And now today is like a completely different side of Jamaica that I'm not accustomed to. And I guess a lot of people watching, I think most people when they come to Jamaica that are non-Jamaicans, they're going to Montego Bay or Negril, Ocho's Rios. They're not going to Kingston and walking through yeah. the hoods. Yeah. But now you guys have showed me a, a residential side, you know, business owners that are obviously successful or they wouldn't have big boats. You asked about like being from a successful family. Yes. And if that comes with pressure. Yes. And I told you, not, there's not pressure to be successful, but there's pressure to work hard and have a good work ethic, which I think my mom has successfully beat into me. Yes. But on the other th side of that... Um, but let me stop you there. What Was it was it, was it taught or was it in your blood? Because I'm a believer that work ethic is something that you're born with. Taught, for me, it's definitely taught. Yeah? Um, I'm a lazy person by nature. Okay. 
Um, I don't want to be a hard worker. Yes. I don't want to work. I want to just relax. I want to <laughs> when, you, when you're living in Jamaica, yeah. and, and this is your surroundings, I can see how yeah. it's a little bit... You saw the island lifestyle. <laughs> yes, yes. I would much rather do that every day. Yes. But now I work 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, I work sometimes I'm up until 2 a.m. Yes. Um, Was anything so, given to you or you have to work for it? I feel like that's a, a loaded question. Yes. A lot was definitely given to me. Life yes. is very grateful. Yes. I'm very grateful for everything, but there's a big aspect in my family of having to work. Yes. So I've worked almost every holiday since I was 13. Um, so once school is done, I'm at a summer job. Yes. Yes, there's times when you could um, fuck off and skip, you know, but it's not rewards don't just come out of nowhere. Right. There's a sense of you do have to earn. Um, and yeah, hard work, my family is all about hard work. I mean, my mom started working full time at around 18 or 19. And she's had less than five, six days in her life. That's work ethic. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. With your parents being Jamaican, do you think they had a more difficult time um, in their early years I growing up here in Jamaica? I think growing up was fine. Yeah. It's the seventies that they always talk about, the Michael Manley era. Yes. About how difficult life was, about how crazy crime got and now, now that was specifically because your family is white or because that was for everybody here on the That's, island? That was for the island. Okay. Um, the country. It was some people describe it as a war. Okay. And you know, luckily I wasn't here for that. But they describe it as a war. A lot of people still can't get over it. If you look at the Jamaican population out of Jamaica, yeah. I think it's almost the same as the Jamaican population yeah, in Yeah, for sure. And a big part of that comes from people leaving, then being able to have families and support big families. So that would be, they definitely had a harder time during those times. And then, you know. But from I, a race perspective, being th- white. Yeah, I think the you, race perspective. There was no stories given to you as a child, like. You know, be careful certain things. The main, because you do stand out yeah, here in the audience, um, right? The main thing ever about being white that I was told was when the party in power at the time, based on our skin color, wanted to take away our business. Okay. And actually threatened my family to take away our business. And at the time, my mom and her, her family, they had to go and get green cards in case they had to run and flee Jamaica. For the USA? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, no matter how bad it got, we decided to stick around and fight for our country, fight for our rights. Yes. Our right to be here, our right to participate. And And do you feel like you're being treated equally here? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's uh, where I think the classism comes into play. Right. Because of the success that my family has worked towards, just like many other people in Jamaica, that's where you get a little difference in treatment. Yes. And it's not really based on skin color. Right. So, but to that effect, that's where we realize um, that's not okay. And that's why we work very hard to make sure we can improve everybody's life. And you give back, right? Yeah, every day. Yes. Um, so even like my grandmother, she used to teach so any Jamaicans out there, you know, Papine. My grandmother used to teach the ladies of Papine how to read, write, sew, um, basic skills that they could use to get a job, etc. And she was held up at gunpoint twice by local gang members telling her to stop this because they don't want people learning, getting skills so that they can leave their situation. Right. Because poverty actually generates wealth for a select few. And it doesn't generate wealth for business owners. That's an important uh, quote there. I'm going to yeah. use that again. That's yeah. incredible. So it it doesn't generate what, contrary to what many people think, Yes. poverty does not generate wealth for business owners. Poverty does not help business owners. Anyone who you see out there successful, unless they're selling chicken back on flour, yeah. poverty doesn't help them. So no one who has a successful business, no one who works hard, wants people to do worse and then want people to be suffering the better the country does is the better we would do right so um yeah poverty helps a select few and then there's a select few like my family who want to change that so like i told you my grandmother she held lessons in her home and had gunmen break into her house yes and twice hold her at gunpoint 
Did, did, did that slow her down from her mission or to help people? Um, no. no. She's given back her entire life non-stop. Yeah. Yeah. After the third time... That could even be motivation to work harder. After the third time of setbacks in that particular um, project, yes, she just found different projects to do. We sponsor the Reggae Boys. We've done, we've done a lot. We've given back, and it's not, it's nothing we need to be rewarded for, acknowledged. And we're only talking about it because these are questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. It's something we feel a sense of duty because it is our country. Right. It's where they raise me. It's where I want to raise my kids. Yes. So my nephews and my nieces are being raised. Um, it's the future for the future generations. Yeah. I see a future here. Remember who who did the first interview, right? <laughs> I love it. I appreciate your time very much. Uh, we've had a wonderful day. You guys only see a small segment, but we had a great time. And hopefully, before I leave, I get to spend uh, more time with James. Uh, I'll put a link down below to his YouTube channel. Check him out. He's at the beginning of his career. Uh, and I know he's going to blow up. I know this video is going to do extremely, extremely well. And you guys got to check him out because his channel is just in the birth. It's going to grow into this gi gi ginormous, gi I don't even know what the word is. But uh, yeah. channel. Man, if I use it, I'm going to have to give the credit. There's going to have to be a little annotation. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have one of the biggest Bumba Clot channels in all of Jamaica. You heard it here first. Uh, star asterisk, uh, borrowed from the Jamaican culture. But what a day. What a day. Thank you. What a day. Man, what a day. And you left us. Look at this. I have one drinking buddy. James doesn't drink. He's driving. That's why he doesn't drink. And he has a vocal problem. But to us, Cheers. I've had at least one Ray and nephew every day. Wait a sec. Maybe you got, maybe you some. Wait a sec. Slow it down. I wasn't ready for you. Tommy, he's taught me three phrases that are popular right now in Jamaica. You can give me one. Circumstances, alter cases, and compulsory meant monkey fuck puss. Wow, that was that, that was intellectually complex. I don't, I didn't know. With you, I understood what was going on, but with you, I don't know what that was. Tell so me. Circumstances, alter cases, and when circumstances alter cases, will end up in a monkey fucking a puss. Yeah, but what's a monkey fucking a puss? It certain puss. things will happen that will never happen in our lifetime. Okay. <laughs> so circumstances, <laughs> alter cases are composed by monkey now, pop who, puss. Who created this phrase? Um, my mother is a first person I heard oh, it. Wow, that's why. What a what a proud young son to carry on the tradition and the lyrics from thy mother. So we have to do one cheers for you. Yes. One. This is a, a lot of Jamaicans know this one, and we do it on my channel when, we, when we're drinking and getting rowdy. Okay. But today, no. But one day before I leave. Yeah, well, can I can't drink. On, okay, but sure. so I'll just do a cheers with you. Okay. Ashes to ashes. Yes. Dust to dust. If liquor doesn't kill us, pussy must. Amen. Yes, I like this. Shit, no better way to die. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I'm talking to you. Only you. Only you. <laughs> Nobody else. Look, you're always here watching me. Look. I will tell He's talked about you all day. All day. He has talked about all, all day. day. The only difference you find with white Jamaicans is two types. There's town white Jamaicans and there's country white Jamaicans. Country white Jamaicans are anyone outside of Kingston and I guess outside of Montego Bay. And they are crazy. They are mad. I'm looking at you, Adam. <laughs> Adam, I'm looking I at you. I knew it was Adam. I could feel it. That's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. White Jamaicans from country, they're, they're touching their head. Okay. But we love them and a lot of people say I remind them of a countryman, so. A little crazy. A little crazy. Oh, it is hot. Hot, hot, hot.